This is Eric Jackson sitting here with Byron Rushing, uh, state rem representative here, majority whip, longtime activist here in the city of Boston. Uh, also a historian on the much that's going on here in the city of uh, Boston. Uh, Byron, how you doing today at the I'm doing Jazz fine. Fest. Thank you for that very nice interview. In, in, introduction to this interview. It, it's all true. In fact, <laughs> I, there's a lot more I probably should be saying, too. <laughs> uh, I, I'm assuming that you've been here at the Bean, to the Beantown before. I think I've been to the Beantown almost every year. Really? There might have right. been one or two I was out of town right. that couldn't uh -huh. make, uh -huh. yes. And what? it's growing and uh, and it's getting more exciting. What what do you think uh, the significance of the Beantown Jazz Festival is to the city of Boston? Well, I think that I can think of two uh, significant things about Beantown. One is that we just do it, that we open up our streets and use them for people to gather and have a good time and listen to good music right. and buy right. a little food. Right. So we should be doing that more than we do, but this is certainly the premier example exactly. for Boston of doing that, and we should be doing it in more places, but it started here on Columbus Avenue. Right. One of the things I've, uh, I'm amazed at always is the diversity of the crowd uh, that's here. Could you speak to that? Or I think that, that's right. Of course, of course, it's because of our long history in Boston, both of us, that this that this seems like something new. Mm -hmm. And that is because it is new. Right, right. And yes, that we yes. have lived in a city that has been so segregated for so long. And, and during most of that time that it's segregated, it has been den in denial about being segregated. Right, that's and true. And so uh, in other cities, you see this a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Boston, it is something that has just started happening in the past 15 years. And it's wonderful. And we hope that people who are visiting here don't remember the past and just enjoy the present. Right, and right. the people who are from right. Boston understand all the things they missed because they didn't have this right, right, a long right, time right. ago. Is there anything that you're doing uh, politically to uh, ensure the continuation of events like this or to, to see that there are more events dealing with the arts here in town? Every time I travel in this country and, 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 have the luck, and have the luck to be able to travel abroad every once in a while, I always come back to Boston with a hundred ideas of things that right. we should be doing. Right. Right. Um, and, the, and holding up our own particular culture, our own local culture is so important. And we have so many people, and this in, in many areas of the arts, but especially in jazz, who are famous everywhere right, else right, except in right, the place that they right, were born right, or went to school. Right, and right. this is a wonderful way, and of course, Jazz Boston is a wonderful way of holding up and telling that history mm -hmm. of how important this place was for nurturing. Right. And that we should make sure that all those people come back here before they die. Right, right. You know, it's interesting. You talked about history. We're right on uh, Columbus Avenue, where so much uh, musical history uh, was made. How do you place uh, the Beantown Jazz Festival? In I think I, I think it's a wonderful idea that they took this corner. Right, uh, right. You know, but uh, and of course, most of the places at, at Mass and Columbus, as it was known right, as. Right. Um, most of the places are gone, but we still have Wally's, right, and that's, right, that, right. that's, that's wonderful. Um, we have the great Harriet Tubman house, but the Harriet Tubman house is on the site of the old hi-hat. Sure, sure. And, uh, and then the other place that we don't have any remnant of it left is on Washington Street. And we need to be talking about all the places that were on Washington Street, the places that were on the Chitlin cir Circuit on Washington Street. What was I the mean, the first on? first place, the, and I'm trying to remember some names here myself. Right. The first place I saw B.B. King was on Washington Street. Oh, is that right? Right. Yeah. And, uh, and then, of course, we had downtown places, too. Um, for that, for, for, but I think it's telling that whole history, the places, but the, the history of the people and the history of how they trapped when they came here, where they had to, where they stayed, all of the, uh, the, all of the history is so important, and Jazz Boston is doing a great job right, right. in raising that all up. I, I think there uh, there were so many clubs in the area, and also again going back to the point you made earlier about segregation, uh, for many African American musicians, this was really the center of activity. This is where. They, they went to the barber shop. This is where the, the restaurants were that they were allowed to eat in. Uh, so, so much of the activity for even nationally known 
uh, artists was happening right here when they That's came right. to we, ju we just had a, a famous diner that just closed, Charlie's, oh, sure. which right. was right. A, right. A, right. a regular from the from the time it started mm -hmm. was was a, a regular place where uh, jazz men and women ate, uh -huh. right? They would just, and they knew they could always come there. There would be no one would say anything. Uh -huh. Right, there would be they 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 were going to be just as comfortable, right? Right. right yes, there right. and 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 that's one of the great things about the history of the South End, uh, and this part of Roxbury uh -huh. is is that is that we've had we've always had that welcoming uh, reputation. We are, we are also not too far away from the old after hours joint, the Pioneer Club. Oh, oh, we want to bring it all up. <laughs> okay, it's all coming up now. <laughs> <laughs> I was too now, young. I, I've I, only heard I, stories. I, I want to tell the, that's, that's the same story. The, the, what, the, the, the fascinating thing, of course, that I remember about the Pioneer Club, and of course, when I came to Boston, it was just it was on its way. It was it was right. it was there right. on on the side street that ran, that ran between between Columbus and the what was the railroad tracks right, then, okay. right? right? Isn't right, that right? right, right. And, uh, and that, of course, they got all taken out when they thought they were going to put I-95 through here. Right, you right. know, we also need to remind people that we would not have the street to stand on if the community had not stopped the interstate I-95 from coming through Boston. Right, right. Yes, yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Um, Byron, thank you very much for uh, well, spending thank you some for time all the work you too. do, and thank oh, you, my pleasure. thank Believe you me. for being what, just one of the great interpreters of jazz for everybody. Believe me, it's my pleasure. Great. Thank you thank very you. much.